Psalms 105. Uh, you know, First Corinthians, First Chronicles 16:7. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord. Thanks unto anything but God. Call upon His name, not Mary. God's name. Make known His deeds among the people. Your testimony. Personal testimony of what the Lord's done for you. I've had churches where testimony time and people get up and they talk about themselves. Or nonsense. Sing unto him. Well, if you hear a daily radio, you don't get no singing about him. Sing psalms unto him. Psalms is the book that we're reading now, studying. Talk ye of all his wondrous works. Again, it's a testimony of the Lord, what he's done for you. You tell others to encourage yourself and encourage others. Glory ye in his holy name. Again, there's no other name, but the Bible says there's no other name given, given amongst heaven, given amongst men, whereby, I blew that one, but Acts 4.12 is the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Let the heart of them rejoice that seek the Lord. So a Christian, a person that is of God, is to be rejoicing. Seek the Lord and his strength, his power to get you through. Not your own power, not something you can do, not something a bank can do, not something a friend can do, but what you can do through the Lord. Seek his face evermore. The Holy Face. Listen, Moses wanted to see God. And God said, no one can see my face. Listen, you know all the people in, in Israel that saw the face of God and rejected him? You've already received him as your Savior by faith. Seek his face. One day maybe you'll see it. By rapture or by death. And then by rapture. Remember his marvelous works that he had done. Testimony and history again. His wonders and judgments of his mouth wonders is that he spoke let, let there be light let there be that let there be and God spoke all that into existence God probably spoke those plagues we're going to read about in a minute in Egypt let there be the flies and really is what it's out of the Moses and Aaron's mouth that they came to be but God, God can just speak and it happens. He said, he said one time to the waves and to the storm, peace, be still. And they were. O ye say, seed of Abraham, his servant. So Abraham was a servant of God. Ye children of Jacob, his chosen. Okay, that, says, that sheds a lot of light. Jews, Israel. Americans are not the children of Jacob, and they're not the chosen. Abraham's seed is. Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob are God's chosen. As a corporate body. He is the Lord our God. Ask any Jew today. They're not doing what the Bible says. They rejected him over the years. But he's not finished with them. He's not done with them. His judgments are in all the earth. He has remembered his covenant, that's agreement, forever. The word which he commanded to a thousand generations. Now you figure from, from Abraham, I don't know how many generations that is, Ben. Which covenant he made with Abraham and his oath unto Isaac. No, Ishmael. Abraham, Isaac, Jacob. And confirmed the same unto Jacob for a law. That is the seed. That is the, <coughs> the royal blood that God sees. Those that are of Abraham. And to Israel for an everlasting covenant. Saying unto thee will I give the land of Canaan. So it's the land, not heaven. 
No Jew look for heaven. It says in Hebrews 11 about, about Abraham, it says he looked for a land. You know, there's only really two groups of religions out there that look for a land for a world denomination that go out and kill and shed blood to get a piece of land. That's stealing from the Old Testament promise to the Jew. This day and age, we look for New Jerusalem. I don't look for a piece of land. The lot of your inheritance. So what do you call a piece of land today? You call it out of King James Bible, a lot. Lot for sale. When they were but a few men in number, yea, very few, and strangers in it. When they went from one nation to another, from one kingdom to another people. He suffered no man to do them wrong. Yea, he reproved kings for their sake. So he protected and guided them, Jewish people. He, he gave them the GP, GPS. Called the Holy Spirit. Called leaders of the nation. Saying. Now this is so often quoted. Touch not my anointed. And do my prophets no harm. I've had preachers. I've heard preachers quote that. You know, you, you, you don't go after them. Verse 6 was written to Jews. That's a Jewish passage. Jewish people. And we're going to get into Jewish history in a minute. And I forget it, what New Testament uh, writer wrote. He says, if there is, an, you know, you respect your elder in the church, but you don't bring an accusation against him, but with two people. I mean, if, if a pastor of a church has sinned, and it needs to be dealt with. You don't go, oh, you know, touch not my anointed and do my prophets no harm. Not, not, not if you didn't, not if you sin. You deal with it openly before the church. See, some will hide behind that verse. Moreover, he called for a famine upon the land. Who? God. God calls for famine. God is in control of the weather. He broke the whole staff of, staff of bread. In other words, there was no wheat, no rye, no barley. It died. And we're going into history now. Notice how many times we've done with history, 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 history. I think God's the God of history because he wants you to remember what happened. So you don't do it again. And those that don't know history are bound to repeat it all over. America has not learned her history and has changed her history. She's going to end up like every nation that's forgotten and gone one day. He sent, matter of fact, the only nation that is not going to be ever forgotten, ever going to be gone, is the nation of Israel. That's it. They will last. They will survive. They will be. He sent a man before them. Who? Even Joseph. God used Joseph to prepare because God foresaw what was going to happen. Who was sold for a servant. Go back in Genesis and read. Whose feet they hurt with fetters, he was laid in iron. That's when he was accused by, the, by his master's wife and they put him in jail. And in jail, his feet were put with tight feathers that hurt. You didn't read about that in Genesis. And he was in iron. You didn't read about that in Genesis. See, Scripture with Scriptures, you'll learn new things. You'll learn greater things. In Genesis, you thought Joseph was there answering dreams and doing his job. But you found out he was in pain. Until the time that his word came, God's word, the word of the Lord tried him. Uh oh. The word of the Lord is going to see what Joseph would do. What was that? When he when that dream came to those uh, those two men, God's going to see if Joseph was bitter against his brothers, bitter against the, his master. I shouldn't be in this jail. Why should I be in this jail? I'm innocent. 
And Joseph didn't. Joseph did what God wanted him to do. Joseph spoke as God wanted him to speak. Even Moses tried to back out. And Moses was, well, probably the story is, but he wrote Genesis. Probably heard the story of how Joseph went before the Pharaoh and spoke to him his dream and all that. I guarantee that was a Jewish story and that Joseph didn't back down, but Moses did. The king, this is this is when Joseph stood before Pharaoh and told him his dream, set and loosed him, even the ruler of the people, and let him go free. Now, that verse 20, the king sent and loosed him. That colon there, that was telling the whole dream to Pharaoh about the, the, the kind and the corn. The ill kind and the fat kind, the ill corn and the, and the healthy corn. You see, a colon in your Bible can be a whole space of time. And many times that colon in your Bible is a church age. It separates from first advent to the second advent. If you didn't have Genesis, you think, all right, the king loosed him, and now he's a ruler of the people. I wonder why. you got to go back to Genesis and read why. Even the ruler of the people, and let him go free. He made him lord of his house. Go back and read that. Genesis. Gave him his ring, gave him the necklace, gave him the power and authority, and a ruler of all his substance. What's that substance? The corn. To gather the corn for the coming famine. To bind his princes at his pleasure. Joseph, we learn, has had the power to put in jail princes. I bet you Volfar's wife walked a little scary around Joseph. He could have thrown her in jail. He had the power, according to Psalms 105.22. And teach his senators wisdom. So Joseph, we learn here, was a teacher. He was a ruler and a teacher after God. At this point in time, you probably the, the nation of Egypt probably learned about the Hebrew God. Israel also came into Egypt to get the food. And Jacob sojourned in the land of Ham. Ham, that's the son of, of, of Noah. The ones that went into Africa. Jacob goes down into Ham. He goes down to Egypt and God never wanted him down there. That is not his territory. And what is in the land of Ham? Colored people. And I'm sorry to say, the colored people in the land of hand, they talk about slavery in America. What about the slavery of the Jewish people? How come that's never spoken in our public school system? How come it's never spoken? Oh, the, 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 the mean, nasty Southerners treated the, the, the slaves with disrespect. And uh, the Bible records that the same people, the Hamites, treated the Jews with rigor. And they wouldn't even give them the building supplies to make the building supplies. Uh, oh, let's put that in a history class in the American public school system. And that God is an abomination to the Hamites. Let's put that in the... The shepherds were an abomination to the Hamites. Let's put that in the American school system of history. No, we got to find it in the Bible. And the Bible is removed, is not allowed in the school system of the public school system of the USIA. I put the I in there because it's all about me, myself, and I. All right. Now we go to the book of Exodus. And he increased his people greatly. It starts off in Exodus. They grew. And made them stronger than their enemies. That's why they feared. That's why the ruler feared. They became mighty men. Powerful men. And he turned their heart to hate his people. God turned the heart to hate his people. He's the one that turned that ruler, the king of Israel, uh, the king of Jacob. Excuse me, hold on. 
make, just know, make a mistake here. The king of Egypt. What well, his heart was turned by God against his people, the Jews, because they were not supposed to be there. And the time that that God told Abraham that it was going to be was coming up, and God needed to do something to get the Jews out of there by the prophecy He told Abraham. I think, and I'm maybe wrong about this. Four hundred ninety years. I can be wrong about that that amount of years. But there was a specific amount of time, and God is now putting prophecy in order, and God is doing his, his workings. He's using the right people at the right time, and here we go. By the way, the king of Egypt could have said, No, Lord, I want to serve you and do right and love your people like the previous Pharaoh that knew Joseph and loved the people. That Pharaoh welcomed Jacob and all the children. And he told Joseph, said, listen, you have any faithful brethren that are just like you. Let them work amongst my people. Let them be rulers in charge. Not this one. To deal subtly with his servants. That's God's servants, Jews. He sent Moses, his servant. And Aaron, whom he... Well, look at that. Between 25 and 26, boy, there's a whole bunch of... It's missing stuff out of Exodus. You gotta go back and read Exodus. Find out what is missing. The burning bush, the marriage, the, the murder. Mama takes care of her boy. That's a period. And look how many years was missing on that one. He sent Moses his servant and Aaron, whom he had chosen. Well, he had to choose Aaron because Moses was going to back out. Had Moses not backed out, given uh, uh, alibis, God would have used Moses, and Moses would probably have been the high priest. Maybe. Possibility. It never happened, so we don't know. They chose his signs. It was those God's signs. Signs are for Jews. Jews require a sign. So all those events that happened in Egypt was for Israel to know that God is the God of all gods and you don't belong where you are. Isn't there a point in the tribulation where God says, get out amongst them, haven't I done enough? And wonders in the land of Ham. All right, here we go. Here's the wonders. He sent darkness. It says thick darkness and no one went anywhere. For three days, I believe it was, and made it dark. And they rebelled not. I mean, and they rebelled not against his word. He turned their waters into blood and slew their fish. Darkness and waters to blood shows up in the tribulation. The land brought forth frogs in abundance. There is frogs spoken in Revelation about the, 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 the false prophet, the false beast, and Satan. In the chambers of their kings. So the frogs went into the palace. And the frogs in Exodus said they were everywhere. They were in the kneading troughs. They were in the ovens. When you put bread in there, out came frog legs. He spoke, God spoke, that's the power of his voice that we read about. He spoke and there came, and there came divers kind sorts of flies. God said, let there be flies, and guess what? There are all different kinds of flies. Divers means several types. There wasn't just one kind of fly. Maybe even flies even unknown to them. I believe it said about the locusts. There was, weren't such any locusts like that in all the land of Egypt. And lice in all their coasts. Now, coasts in the Bible is, is the boundary line. It doesn't just mean coasts like where water is. The border of Egypt, there was lice. All inside Egypt, there was lice. He gave them, he, God gave them hail for rain. Instead of rain, he gave them hail. And a flaming fire in their land. And they said that was lightning. 
and a fire ran across the ground. The lightning ran across the ground. So even some some cartoons will show you that in, in laughter, but it was real. He smote, God smote their vines also and their fig trees and break, and break the trees of their coats. God literally destroyed Egypt. Crops. When you destroy the crops and water and fish, you destroy the economy. The Nile River was the economy for Egypt. It brought forth fish. It brought forth water to drink. It brought forth water for all the crops. That Nile Delta there, the, that, that was a fertile Delta area that it was a good fertile soil that you could use to grow crops, I'm told. Well, now it's been destroyed by dead fish and blood. He spanked. God spanked. I got a note for that. Exodus 10, 13, the east wind. God spanked and the locusts came and the caterpillars and that without number. We learned caterpillars were there too. And did he, listen, the, the writer of this psalm has got an inspiration by the Holy Spirit. Say, hey, I want you to tell a little more about the Jewish history. I want you to give more facts. It's extra information. It's like the gospel. Each gospel is written by, by the writer thereof and gives a, 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 their own tone. Of what the Holy Spirit wanted them to write, even though it may not be in all four Gospels, or in all four Gospels, and it's told differently. It's the same story, just some have more facts than others. One Gospel writer writes about two men, two maniacs of Gadara. One deals with just one man, and did eat up all the herbs in their land, and devoured the fruit of their ground. So they had a feast. He smote also all the firstborn in their land, the chief of all their strength. Well, also the, the recording Exodus from, from Pharaoh's uh, palace all the way down to the homeless man living underneath the bridge. I believe even the animals. Maybe wrong in that one. He brought, you see, verse 36 is pointing out Pharaoh's house was touched. He brought them forth also with silver and gold. And there was no and there was not one feeble person among their tribes. The Bible says that their clothes rotted not and their feet swelled not. That's impossible. That's a miracle within itself. You know, as far as I can tell, I don't read except for after the Canis Barnea incident. Do you ever read about anybody dying on the way to Carnish Car Barnea? There's no deaths recorded until after they sinned and wouldn't go in the land and rebelled and weren't going to go back. Egypt was glad when they departed, for the fear of them fell upon them. Listen, there was one point with these plagues that even the rulers of we're coming up to Pharaoh. You get rid of these people. Our land is destroyed. You moron. He couldn't say that though. He was king. But you know they were thinking it. He spread a cloud for a covering. And fire to give light in the night. God guided him. At 24 hours a day. The people asked, and he brought quails, and satisfied them with the bread of heaven, manna. Manna is the bread of heaven. Later on, you're going to find in Psalms, it was the angel's food, or if we not already studied that. He opened the rock, and the waters gushed out. They ran in the dry places like a river. There's that rock being opened. Christ, Paul says, like a river glorious. 
the water of life. For he remembered his holy promise and Abraham his servant. The Jews are who they are today because of Abraham, not because of who they are. Abraham was faithful and was accounted to him. And God, in the faithfulness that Abraham showed, God said, listen, all your seed, like David. Listen, your seed is going to sit on that throne because of who you are, what your character is, and what your heart is. Even though Kaniah did wrong and God broke that line there, Jesus Christ is of David and fills in that gap and is going to be forever on David's throne. How about that? And now Ishmael and, La and Magazine will say, you know, Isaac and Ishmael are of Abraham. I remember that. Art. No, guess what? That's wrong. That's a misprint. You can sue the company because Ishmael was not of Abraham. He was of Abram. And that's why God changed his name to Abraham before Isaac was born, after Ishmael was born. He brought forth his people with joy. God had joy. Man, they were praising God's holy name when they were leaving that night, and God liked it until they got to the Red Sea. And his chosen with gladness. This chosen is Israel. And gave them the lands of the heathen. Cana. You know, the Hivites, the Hivites, the, you know, the Archite, and all those other Archites. They inherit the labor of the people. Now, what's that mean? When Mr. Hivite built himself a house and put a fence around it and a nice apple tree or whatever tree, fig tree, he put a fig tree in the yard and he had a garden. The Israelite would come in and conquer the land, and that Israelite and his family would move in that house. And oh, look at that! Time for faith. Yum, yum, yum. When Mister Jebusite would go out there, he digged himself a nice big well with nice thirsty, clean water, spring water, and he put a bucket down there. Israel would come in there and conquer the nation, and he, the Israelite that took the land would come up, put the bucket in. Oh, look at that! Nice fresh water. You realize Israel, when they came in the land, did not have to build houses and plant gardens and that. It was already there, the Bible records. How about that? That they might observe his statutes and keep his laws, which we know, because we've studied the Bible, they don't do. Praise ye the Lord. For what? For all the history of the Jews. You ought to read Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, 1st, 2nd Samuel, 1st, 2nd Kings, 1st, 2nd Chronicles. All the books of the Bible with the fact is that it's history, it is recorded, it is stuff that God has done. It is one group of people that is all the people, all the nations of the world. We are a group of people chosen because we, we are chosen through Christ. The Jews were chosen through Abraham. We are chosen through Christ. That God so loved the world and history that he gave his only begotten son. How do you remember that? You don't go tell others. God is the God of history. And even with that, as we learn in this psalm, and you, as you read your Bible, you learn more history. You know, when you read the, uh, the book of James, you know what you find out? You find out Lot in Genesis was a just man. James also tells us, or Malachi, I think, Malachi or James tells us that there was three and a half years of no rain in Elijah's time. We are told more information in the book of Hebrews about men and women. We are told by Jesus that that great fish in Jonah was a whale. We are told by Jesus there was a man named Solomon. There was a queen of Sheba that came and visited him. 
we know by Jesus in the writings that there was Moses and Elijah. It always goes back to history. And you know why America is going to be ruined? Because she has changed or completely deleted and omitted history. And we moved the Bible out of the schools and out of people's lives. Be, be not deceived, God is not mocked. Whatsoever man soweth, that he shall also reap. O oh Lord my God, when I in awesome wonder consider all the worlds thy hands have made, I see the stars, I hear the rolling thunder, thy power through out the universe displayed then sings my soul my savior god to thee how great thou art how great thou art then sings my soul my savior god to thee how great thou art And when I think that God, his son, not sparing, sent him to die, I scarce can take it in. That on the cross, my burden gladly bearing, he bled and died to take away my sin. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee. How great thou art, how great thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee.